Matthew chapter 14, we want to commence reading at the 22nd verse. Matthew chapter 14, commencing reading at the 22nd verse, and it reads, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear but straightway jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and peter answered him and said lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus but when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying lord save me and immediately that the church out immediately and immediately jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him O thou of little faith wherefore didst thou doubt when they came in the ship the wind ceased then they that were in the ship came and worshiped saying of a truth thou art the son of god for the sake of our subject, let us look at verse 31 more time. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't lose your focus. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. My brothers and my sisters, it is no shock or surprise that this life can hand you tragedy, trials, and tribulations. Life can hand you chaos and confusion. Life can hand you disturbance, destruction, distractions, and disasters. There are many distractions. We find it here in our text today th that these disciples are facing a distraction. You and I have to face distractions on a daily basis. Can I give a few to you? There are satanic distractions where Satan purposely puts distractions in your life to make you lose your focus. There are social distractions where people around you are distracting you and making you lose your focus. But then sometimes there are self-distractions. Sometimes we can become our own enemy. You do know that every storm and situation you go through is not satanic produce, meaning Satan is the cause. Some storms are self induced meaning some things we bring on ourselves but my beloved this text gives us inspiration and motivation to not allow our distraction to work against us but rather for us uh, don't make them defeat us but rather develop us uh, here in our text we have an awesome text that tests our faith uh, well preacher what is faith i'm glad you asked according to hebrews now faith is the substance of things hopeful come on talk back to me it's it's the evidence of things that are not seen faith is truly having true confidence in god we're talking about having faith faith plays a major role in the christian life and it should be exercised daily as a matter of fact this text suggests that you and i today faith can determine how close you can be to god or how far you can be from god can I say that again, Clay? A faith can determine how close you can be to God or how far you can be from God. And in our text today, Jesus has constrained or he has made his disciples get into a ship. John records the reason why Jesus gives this hasty breaking up of the assembly. In John chapter 6, the Bible records that the multitude was so shocked and surprised that Jesus took two fish and five barley loaves and fed the multitudes. But not only did he feed the multitudes, but the text also suggests that he had 12 fragments left over. 
and they were so amazed by this that they were literally going to take Jesus and make him king right then but Jesus knew he had been made for a mission he knew this was not his ultimate goal he knew he had to go to a hill called Calvary and die for sinners like you and I my brothers and my sisters Jesus goes into a mountain he goes into this isolated place there are many customs in the jewish religion where they had places like this where they would go and do what is called private prayer jesus though he is yet god though he is yet prayed to he still took the time to pray to the father he teaches us private prayer the bible says that if you pray privately then the world the lord will reward you openly instead of calling Pookie and Ray Ray them we got to learn how to have a little talk with Jesus tell them all about our troubles here hear our faintest cry he'll answer by and by the text suggests and teaches us how the importance of private prayer is there are some people in the house today that can testify preacher if it wasn't for prayer and a word of God I would have lost my mind a long time ago anybody know there's power in your prayer luke 18 and 1 says men should always pray and not faint jeremiah 33 and 3 says call me and i will answer james 5 and 15 says and the prayer of faith shall save the sick james 5 and 16 says the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much anybody know that there's power in your prayer I don't care how broke you are, how bruised you are. If you just take some time, send God some knee mail, he'll answer your prayer. But watch, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Jesus goes into an isolated place and he sends the multitude away. He sends them to the other side. Can I give you a few points about what happened on the other side? Oh, we see in the text number one, the problem on the ship. We see the problem on the ship. Look at what verse 24 says. Verse 24 says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Can I tell you what's happening instantly? The disciples go from peace to problems. It's, it's, it's a storm at night, but yet Jesus is still in prayer. The disciples go exactly where Jesus designs them to go without detour. They go, but the text says they're met with the storm. Yeah. Matthew 8 and 24, the disciples were met with the storm. Jesus was with them, but he was asleep. But now in this storm, Jesus is awake, but he's not with them. I need you to get this Jesus. They go exactly where he tells them to go, but yet they're met with the storm. Many of us have been in this same predicament, did exactly what the Lord told us to do. Had every T crossed, every I dotted, every blank filled in, did what the preacher said do. But out of nowhere, we find ourselves met with a storm. Have you ever just said, Lord, I come to church, pay my tithes and my offering. I'm in Sunday school. I'm in Bible study, Lord. Those jokers that I know can't stand me, but yet I'm facing storms. The storm came because they were in the will of God and not like Jonah out of the will of God. Uh, uh, did, 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 did Jesus not know the storm was coming? He knew the storm was coming because he is the chief meteorologist. He is the weatherman. Jesus knew uh, the storm was going on, but when you read the Bible, we discover that there are two kinds of storms. There are storms of correction but then on the flip side, there are storms of perfection. Oh, can I say that again? There are storms of correction. But then there are storms of perfection. Jonah was in the midst of a storm because he disobeyed God and needed to be corrected. But the disciples go and they obey God, but yet they're trying to be perfected by God. That's why you must realize that when you're going through storms, God is sometimes not correcting you. He's perfecting you. Uh, he's not hurting you. He's helping you. He's not, been, he's not breaking you. He's benefiting you. Sometimes the Lord is simply trying to make us stronger, wiser, and better. In other words, Jesus was trying to educate them. 
Uh, my favorite preacher, one of my favorite preachers, Tellis Chapman, said that education is not complete until the student can conform to the teaching material. Tellis said that it doesn't matter how much the teacher can write the assignment out uh, because it doesn't matter how many times the teacher can write the assignment. It's not complete until the student can tell the teacher what's been taught. What, 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 what preacher are you trying to tell us? The Lord would love to further our education, but he knows sometime the best time to educate us is when we're going through a storm. See, we, we, we talk to them, yes, when we, everything's good, but we don't know the power of prayer until we're hurting. Anybody know that sometime God will educate you simply because he's wanting to perfect you? It's like the man that went on vacation. Man took out the shirt and began to iron the shirt. The shirt said to the man, man, what are you doing? Are you trying to burn me? Yeah, but the shirt, man sold the shirt. He says, I'm not trying to burn you. He says, I'm trying to make you better. He says, there are some wrinkles on you. And he says, if I'm going to get the wrinkles out, I got to add some heat to your life. The shirt said, man, well, how do you know you're not going to burn me? The, shirt, the man told the shirt, well, I looked at your label. He says, I know that you're a cotton shirt. And he says, I'll preset the temperature. And he says, I wouldn't put a linen heat on a come in, come in, New Jerusalem. The Lord will never put more on you. Then he able to bear. Come on, high five your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know it looks bad. I, I, I know bills are stacking up, but the good news is he'll never put more on us. Then we're able to bear. Many Christians believe when the John church is gonna get easy. It's going to be soothed sailing. Mama loved it. Jesus said in this world you're going to have trials. Tribulation. Peter said all of us who live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Paul said we endure hardness as a good soldier. Job said a man born of a woman is but a few days. Those few days are full of trouble. Sometime in your life you're going to be forced to face storms. But not only do we see the problem on the ship. Number two, we see the presence of the Savior. Look at what verse 25 says. Verse 25 says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went with him, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Many times we feel like when we're going through, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has left us. God is transcendent, meaning he sits up high. But the good news is not only is he transcendent, but he's also imminent, meaning he looks down low. He's transcendent, meaning uh, he's high and above. But he's imminent, meaning that he's not removed. I'm glad that God has connectivity with his peoples. That's why the song said his eyes is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. In other words, they're coming and they're met with a storm. Can I help you? Jesus walked on the water because he wanted to show them that the very thing that you're afraid of. The very thing that got you scared, I'm going to use that as a staircase to get you and I closer. In other words, Jesus is going to use that thing that got you down, that's got you worried, got you keeping up all night long watching CSI and criminal minds can't sleep eating everything in the refrigerator. He said, I'm going to use that thing that got you worried to help you make it through. He says, the text suggests that we have the presence of the Savior. I'm glad that whenever I face a problem, I'm sure that he's going to show his presence. Anybody glad that the Lord will just step in right on time? The songwriter said he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time.